Welcome to UCF's Rosen College of Hospitality Management Faculty Forum. I am Lori Safford, Director of Student Services, and I thank you for joining us this evening. This forum is designed for new students and parents to engage with a few of our outstanding faculty members and administrators to hear expectations, tips for academic success, and to ask questions to prepare you for the higher education experience. To ask questions, simply type into the Q&A box located on your screen. Our goal is to get to every question, but just in case we do not get to your question with the faculty member, please check the chat box periodically throughout the session for a response or additional guidance. This session is being recorded and students may access the recording by signing into their orientation portal. To get us started, I will turn it over to our Associate Dean, Dr. Alan Fiel, and our Lodging and Restaurant Management Department Chair, Dr. Robin Bass. Thank you. Lovely, thank you, Laurie, and nice to see so many faces. Hello, friends, colleagues, really good to see you all. Um, no, welcome to what is actually the first time we've actually done this, is this faculty forum, the idea being for new students to get to know some of the faculty and to understand a little bit what we do, how we do it and why we do it, and collectively how it makes us the number one college of its kind in the country, which is fantastic. My name is Dr. Alan File. I'm the Associate Dean at the Rosen College, and I work very closely with our three department chairs, of which we've got two here this evening, Dr. Robin Mack and Dr. Stephen Pratt. So I'll ask them to introduce themselves in a moment. Um, and then many colleagues across the college from all our departments and areas uh, who can answer questions and help explain why we're such an amazing uh, college. When you were looking or while you were waiting for us to come in, you would have seen four slides going through. One of them, what we call Hospitality Plus, showcases the many degrees, certificates and graduate programs that we have. We'll showcase that at the end, uh, but hopefully those that are in attendance are from one of our six degrees. Our degrees in Hospitality Management, Event Management, Entertainment Management, uh, lodging and restaurant management, lifestyle community management, and the newest of the lot, our theme park and attraction management program. Dr. Chris Baker is beaming in the corner, uh, very happy with that program that we'll explain as we go through. Um, our six main programs and the bulk of this evening will be addressing questions uh, pertaining to those six. But before going on any further, can I ask Dr. Back and Dr. Pratt, in that order, just to uh, make a quick introduction to yourselves and your department. So, Robin, over to you first. Thank you, Alan, and hello, everyone. It's great to be here and um, nice to see you all. So I am the interim chair of the Department of Food Service and Lodging Management. So think lodging, hotels, resorts, and then restaurants and anything to do with the food industry which is a $900 billion industry in this country. So it is a, a huge industry. And um, in my department, we house the bachelor's degree in lodging and restaurant management, as well as a great certificate, a fun certificate in beverage management, where you get to do a lot of lab courses, including tastings and food pairings. Um, so you're going to have fun at Rosen College. Lovely. Thank you very much, Robin. Dr. Pratt. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Alan. Yes, as Alan mentioned, I am the department chair in tourism, events and attractions, otherwise known by the acronym T. So under T, we have the three bachelor programs. So entertainment management, events management, and our newly approved and starting this fall, Bachelor of Science in theme park and attractions. So um, very excited. And, uh, you know, if you can't have fun uh, learning and studying about theme parks, about entertainment industry and about events, then, um, you know, there's, it, it's, a, it's a perfect place to study and perfect place to, um, you know, to learn about and contribute to the industry. So it's just an exciting uh, three programs that um, I have the fortunate privilege to, uh, you know, to guide and, um, and to facilitate uh, student learning. Lovely. 
Thanks very much, Robin and Stephen. So we, this is going to be a very, very informal evening. Um, I'm going to bounce around through various faculty uh, with some questions that I have. But obviously, our guests this evening, if you've got questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A. My, my colleague, Laurie Safford, uh, will answer them. And what, what, one of the real purposes of this evening, I sat through an orientation myself as a parent at a different Florida university two weeks ago and was amazed about the questions that people were asking. And I realized, ah, we speak in our own language and most parents don't understand actually what we do at all. So it was a wake up call for me. So we will try and make it as non jargon as possible and hopefully put uh, minds at ease. So uh, colleagues, what, what, I, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to ask you questions on how do you run a normal class? Not that there's necessarily a normal class, but if I'm a student and I'm taking your class and let, I'll give you a heads up, I will go start with Professor Deb and then Carissa and Diego. I'll pick you three for this one. If I were to be a student coming into your class, I sit down, how does it work? Okay, you get about 90, well, an hour and 15 minutes, so 75 minutes, how does it work? So Professor Deb, thanks for joining. What does a student experience in a typical class with yourself? Well, thank you for asking Dr. Fayel and welcome to everyone who's attending. I'm very, very glad that you're here. Um, a normal class for me begins with everyone getting out their name card. We have name cards in my classes, no matter how many students there are. So we get, we get to know one another. That's a very important component of the class. And we start, my students must read the chapter and take the quiz before the class so that there's a very rich discussion. We use video content to bring what we're learning about to life. It's, a, it's very much discussion oriented. I'm very interested to hear what everyone has to say. And there really are no wrong answers, just different perspectives that we can celebrate. Using one another's names is very important because we build community. I co-teach with a number of industry professionals and a few colleagues who are on the screen right now to bring the expertise to life, also to bring opportunities to join the industry as well. All are welcome, and uh, I believe it's a great place to be. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Deb. Uh, Diego, how may your class differ to Professor Deb? What's, yes. what's the Diego experience? Uh, so thank you for having me. Uh, my classes are also very interactive. You know, I, I like to have my students study uh, at home before they attend my classes. Uh, we call this a flipped class classroom. Um, so that when they come to my class, I like to ask them a bunch of questions, test their knowledge, have more in-depth discussions about uh, the materials that they have read. I also love having guest speakers. I always have a couple of guest speakers per class um, for my lodging or restaurant management courses. Uh, so, you know, I have hotel managers, restaurant managers, sales and marketing managers, you name it, uh, attend my class. Uh, my students love those guest speakers. I also like to organize at least one field trip per semester uh, so that my students can visit uh, the operations and get to know the operations of like fabulous uh, hotels and restaurants in the area. So that's how I tend to organize my classrooms. And um, that's pretty much uh, how, how it works. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Jagger. Dr. Baker, final one on this theme. Hello, everyone. Um, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. So I completely agree with Professor Deb and Diego in that I also like to have you kind of read the chapter beforehand, cover the material beforehand so that we can have a really good and rich discussion in class. Um, I mainly teach in theme park and attraction management, and I think that that's a, a discipline that is definitely made up of important concepts and then also important experiences that you get on the job. So I tend to kind 
kind of um, go back and forth between here's an important concept, it's going to be on the test, and then let's actually think about how that concept comes into play within the industry. So I often will use my own industry industry experiences within the classroom. And then I always, because I have so many students who also work in the theme park industry, I always ask them, um, have you seen this? So let's just say we're talking about a, a security situation or a safety situation. What have you seen in the workplace? So really trying to ground those concepts in what they've seen in the industry. Um, like Diego and Professor Deb, I also love guest speakers. I think it's safe to say that Rosen College has some of the very best guest speakers. Um, they are all um, industry professionals, um, working leaders in the industry. So that's, I think, the the fun thing um, about, I think, going to Rosen College is getting the, the professor's experience, the important concepts, personal experience from students, and then those phenomenal guest speakers. I think you're going to love it. Lovely. Thank you, Carissa. Excellent. If my son was tuning in tonight, the first question he would ask, do I have to turn up? Because he's 18. That's what an 80 year Do I have to turn up? So attendance. Um, uh, Dr. Mann, Dependra, uh, maybe Robin and Rosemary. So Dependra, how do you handle attendance in your classes? Thank you, Alan. First of all, I would like to say hello to everybody who is attending this session over here. Uh, and I'm glad to be here to answer some of the questions. And I teach accounting and finance and quantitative courses, uh, data analysis for the graduate level and financial accounting, managerial accounting and hospitality finance that's in the area of corporate finance for the undergraduate level. So oftentimes I do get questions from students that is it important for us to come to each and every class? So my answer to them is, if I'm teaching face-to-face -face class, I do have an attendance sheet. And there's a reason for that. I want every student to come to the class because in class, when we're working hands-on on some of the problems that are given for the homework, so that works as a practice session for the students. And at the same time, it gives me an insight into my students, how they are learning, if they are deviating, where they are deviating. And that's an opportunity for me to get them back on track and so that, you know, we all are on the same page and everybody can have an excellent learning experience. Having said that, also the research has pointed out there's a very high correlation in attendance and your earned grades. So please keep this in mind. You can, if you want, you can skip a class, but that will not be advisable from me. So, uh, uh, in my classes, typically, I encourage all the students to come and attend the classes, whether it's face-to-face -face sessions, whether it's mixed-mode sessions. And also, interestingly, if I'm teaching online sessions, I do have uh, synchronic online sessions where I do require students to come online so that we can discuss some of the important concepts. I can go over some of the examples. And uh, all that is designed in such a way that it is beneficial for them to understand these concepts and be prepared for the coming exams. So uh, uh, I, I do encourage everybody yeah, to attendance attend. is a good thing. Attendance is a good thing. It's a good thing. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Tapendra. Rosemary, what about you? How do you handle attendance in your classes? Thank you. Uh, I do use uh, UCF here. It's actually scanning a QR code when you come in. Uh, it keeps track of everything we're doing. And also, one of the things I do is when we have group presentations, I want students to participate, even though they were not in that group, to give their feedback and their comments. So once they scan the QR code, it shows that they were there and also they get to be involved in those discussions. So I literally reward them about 10 points per class for attendance, wow. especially the face-to-face -face class. And that will help with their grades because sometimes you may miss a quiz here and there and those 10 points or 20 points adds up for the entire semester. So I do encourage that a lot and get them involved. I want them to be involved in the discussion, not just being absent because it's a different group that's presenting, so everybody participates and give their feedback. So at the end of the class, I'll give them maybe till the next day to give their comments on that presentation, what they learned, what they took from it, and what they're gonna do with that information. So I'm very, very pleased about that one. I think it worked really well. 
And uh, UCF has been great in giving us a fancy QR code that they just scan from their mobile phones when they come in the class. QR codes, the future is QR codes, lovely. And finally, Dr. Mack, what about attendance in your classes? Well, in my department, we house most of the lab courses um, at Rosen College, so cutlery labs and beverage labs. The courses that I teach myself are mainly wine courses and spirits courses that have labs. So what are labs in these courses? They're tastings. You get to taste wine, you get to taste spirits, you learn some mixology, you get to pair them with food. So it's great fun, but it's also really important that you're there because if you miss the labs, then you miss an integral component and very important component of the course. And a lot of so their hybrid courses, you're going to do the theory, the reading online, and then you're going to come in for the tastings and the discussion about the tastings. So it's really important that you're there. I take attendance and students who miss more than half, half or more of the labs in a semester cannot pass the course irrespective of how well they do and everything else, because you've missed such an important component. But there are online versions as well. So if you're really ill, you can't come to class, then take an online course instead. But if you're going to come to class, you need to be there. And But I must say that with our lab courses, we have very, very high attendance because students generally love our labs. And just one little FYI for our students, we're very lucky in the state of Florida because in a lot of states, you can't take a course that involves alcohol tasting until you're 21. In Florida, you can take our alcoholic beverage courses when you're 18. So you get to taste in class and you're under the guidance of an instructor in an educational environment. And the reason for that is if you were, for example, doing our beverage certificate program, you wouldn't be able to complete it in time before graduation, um, in the case of most students, if you couldn't start it until you're 21. So that's a really good plus of being here in Florida. Dr. Matt, you've made me very, very thirsty, but unfortunately I've just got Publix water. <laughs> but hey, you know, it, it is what it is. Okay, thank you very much. A lot of you, you've, um, you've mentioned different modalities of classes. So for the benefit of the, our guests, we have three, primary modalities we have p which is in person the traditional in person class we have w which is a web class which is fully online and then we have a hybrid which we call m mode which is mixed modality which is part in in class and part online so anyone who would like to tell me what is their favorite modality and why who would like to offer i would personally prefer uh i well since i started the uh, delivering study abroad programs to my students so every month of may me and a group of 16 students we go to europe uh and you know to and we is that the european europe. modality Diego? the european modality okay the european and, modality. Uh, <laughs> okay it's a it's a different kind of course not you know we we offer I would say two or three study abroad programs at the Rosen College. And, and what I love about, you know, being with the students like almost 24 seven during those two weeks where when we are in Europe is, is that I get to know them really well and to interact with them. And we, we, we become almost like friends, to be honest with you, uh, by the end of the trip. So um, out of all of the data, out of all of the modalities so far that I've taught, this one is the best for me. Study abroad modality, right? Study abroad modality, exactly. Study, study abroad modality. And just to um, um, echo Diego, I haven't done a cool study abroad trip yet, but I will say I love face-to-face. -face. I just love being able to talk to students. And um, I should say the face-to-face -face courses often meet twice per week instead of the once per week that a mixed mode class is. So to me, that's twice the fun talking to my students and get to know them better. And um, Professor Deb, I think you were waving at me earlier as well. Did you want to comment? Yes, thank you, Dr. Fayel. My favorite modality by far is face-to-face -face for some of the reasons that my esteemed colleagues just mentioned. I like being with the students. I like us being together. I think it's very, very important. Also, I have a lot of industry contacts 
And because I want to cover the material, I invite people in for co-teaching, but I'm very strategic about it. So in week one in intro, we have the Ritz-Carlton in. And oftentimes my co-teachers will also be past students graduates from the Rosen College who are now doing magnificent things all around the world. And I think it's very inspiring for my students to hear, I was in your seat in this classroom just a handful of years ago. It's very, very exciting. And when I survey my students at the end of the semester, they always say their favorite thing about the course is having alumni come back and go teach. It's just very inspiring. So, and also I like study abroad to come in. I like Dr. Back to come in and co-teach, Dr. Baker to come in and co-teach. And then my students can see what wonderful professors they're going to have in the future. So I love face-to-face -face. and attendance, just as a side note, of course you have to attend. It's not the same unless we're all there. So thank you. Lovely. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm just going to answer a question. Oh, Dr. Back, far yes, away. I just want to mention, because no one's really mentioned um, fully online, and we shouldn't forget about that. I also love teaching in class. I love interacting with the students. However, there is a place for fully online courses, one for students whose schedules don't allow them to be in classes frequently and can take a class online, especially where the alternative is not taking it at all. But also we have some courses that lend themselves more to online. So for example, our beverage sales marketing and distribution course, we have industry experts from all over the country and in fact, all over the world that are guest speakers in that class. And we can pre-record them and then the students can watch them. If they want, they can email them if they have specific questions, but we could not ask someone to fly in from Napa Valley or from Bordeaux to give a one hour lecture in Orlando. However, with a fully online course, we can harness all that global expertise. So there is definitely place for fully online courses as well. Lovely, thank yeah. you. And one more Dependra, then I'm gonna to move to a different question. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. To respond to your question, what modality I like the best, and also to add to what Robin just mentioned, fully online modality. Uh, for the courses that I teach, these are numerical courses and often quite challenging for the students. So I have found that mixed mode works best, or mixed mode is the one that I like the most. The reason for that is, as Diego mentioned earlier, these this is also known as flipped classroom. So what happens is before we meet for once a week class, I provide students with my recorded videos and online resources that they can go on and prepare themselves for the class. And we use the once a week precious class time to work on the problems and clarifying any you know, uh, concepts or questions they have so that they all are well prepared. Now, uh, the other reason for this is this gives a lot of flexibility to the students. They don't have to come twice on campus to the week. And sometimes they can, they can just go fully online for the whole week also. So that's the kind of flexibility the mixed mode classes offer to the students. So uh, that is also one of the most uh, you know, preferred or uh, popular modality that's available at Rosen College. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. I'm just going to answer a question that was raised in. I'm looking onto a different screen here. Uh, what's the average class size? The average class size is 44 at the Rosen College, but classes vary from 25 to 35 to 75. Um, but the overall average for everything is 44. So although we're a very large college, our class sizes are very comfortable. In the labs, Rob, I think they're around 20. Uh, and even in the online uh, sections, we don't cram them full of everybody they normally peak at 75 and then we open up another section so we're very much committed to smaller class sizes so it's a bit of a mystery when you look at UCF with 70,000 students you assume all the classes are big no 
no, it, uh, that, that, that's not the case. Okay, slightly different question, everybody. Um, I'm a new student. I'm, I'm just starting at Rosen. I'm into week five or six, and I'm struggling. Orlando's fun. There's lots of temptations. I'm struggling with my studies. So if a student is struggling in your class, what type of things do you do to try and help that individual just sort of get back on track or give them a little pep talk or, or whatever is needed. I'm going to start with Professor Deb, actually, because I know you do this very well. So what sort of things do you do to put my mind at ease, get me back on track and just make me feel a little bit comfortable? Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um, number one, I, I'm going to ask my, hopefully it won't be that far into the semester mm. since we have weekly quizzes. So there's an opportunity in my class to outline the chapter and have your quiz grade averaged with 100. So the first thing that I will do with the student is ask them to come to office hours. Usually mine are rather robust, so you're going to make some friends while you're waiting or while you're present. And I think that's important to have some study partners in the class. The other thing that I'm going to do is ask you, have you been doing the outlines? And they're not mandatory, but they're very, very helpful to retain information. And if a student says, usually what will happen is in the first quiz or two, if a student doesn't do well, they'll come and ask. And my first question is, are you doing the outlines? And if they're not, I suggest try to do an outline the next time. Take the quiz and see how you do. And usually you'll get one wrong or none wrong. But also I like collaboration. I like my students to know one another. And I like my students in office hours because then I can see where maybe you're struggling and how can I help you and how can you help one another? And I encourage, I always want my students coming to see me. There's not too much visitation in my world. Just keep coming. And my students do very, very well. And I'm very proud of them. Professor Deb, you have one of the most vibrant offices on campus. So I, I can vouch for that. Ne never dull. Anybody else? If I, a struggling student, five or six weeks in. How do you help me? How do you get me back on track? Any anyone w w wish to offer any thoughts? I, I Dr. Baker, and then uh, Dependra. Okay. Start with Carissa, then to Dependra. Okay. Um. So I always, of course, take them aside. The what's What's going on? Is there something that we can look at? But one of the things I can say, um, occasionally it might feel a bit overwhelming to go to a university as large as UCF, but Rosen has such an intimate setting. It's so small. We have the most phenomenal student services team. We have an amazing internship team, an amazing career services team, amazing academic advisors. So some of these things are going to end up being academic issues. How can we work th with that? Can I as a faculty work with that? Do you need to go to the writing center? Maybe it's a writing issue. Is this an advising issue? But it also might be something like a mental health issue and we also have that on-site mental health counseling um, so I think the key for me is always just figuring out what is the root of the problem is it maybe you're just your time management is not great or maybe it's a maybe you're taking Dependra's class and math is really difficult and that's what oh. you need more assistance with and guess what we also offer tutoring in some of those areas so I, I think probably the best answer to this question is Rosen um, College has so many resources for students that whatever the issue is, it's probably something we can help with. Wonderful. Hugh Dependra. Yeah, uh, thanks, Carissa. So uh, as Carissa mentioned, I do get a lot of students who, who, who uh, usually fall behind in the beginning weeks. And by the time they are nearing their midterms, it's a wake-up call for them. And I have to shake them up a little bit earlier and I make them aware that we, we do have resources available. And uh, what we have started from uh, past couple of years is accounting lab that is hosted by Rosen College. And we all have it open for all the students who are taking any accounting or finance courses across the 
spectrum, they can reach out to any of the professors who are teaching these courses and ask for help. We all are available for help and we are here for you all. So please know this, this is a very valuable and important resource for you. Please do not have this block that, you know, I'm not taking class with Dr. Mann, so I cannot go to him. No, if you're taking accounting, finance, any related course, you're always welcome to my office. Whenever I have my office hours, my doors are open. You can just walk in. You don't need to take an appointment and I'm here to help you. Please keep this in mind. Your success is our success. Lovely. Thanks, Dipendra. Communication, emails. We all get zillions of emails every day. Um, so I'm going to heads up. I'm going to pick on Dr. Pratt and Dr. Back for this one. I'll pick on the two chairs. Um, how should students correspond with emails? I see quite a few emails and I think, mm, not so sure that's probably the correct etiquette to correspond with the professor, but never mind. So Dr. Pratt, how, how would you advise a young student to communicate uh, with you on email? Yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. File. Um, a couple of things. First, I would say, please state which course you're referring to. Um, uh, lots of our faculty teach, well, all of our faculty teach numerous courses, uh, and therefore, um, you know, of course, it's top of mind, you're probably in your top of mind, but, um, you know, to solve the problem, we, you know, we don't want to, um, well, it's important to know which course we're talking about. So that, that would I say number one. Uh, two, um, I don't know how my colleagues feel about this, but um, yeah, just, I mean, state all the information and, uh, you know, in, in full. Uh, so, you know, if it's an email, then we don't really necessarily enjoy emojis or text, uh, text speak. Uh, we're often the next generation up. So, um, you know, writing it out in full allows us to, you know, understand the full, um, you know, any details and um, all the details and not to, um, so there's less chance of misinterpretation. And, uh, and thirdly, I would say then, you know, often in the course syllabus, then uh, the instructors will give some sort of time frame to uh, expect a reply. So, you know, that that can vary, but usually is not immediately. Uh, we're not often up at uh, in the middle of the night as uh, some students are, but similarly, uh, you know, it's important um, for our, our instructors to be responsive, which uh, which they are. And uh, but but yes, some it varies from faculty to faculty, but uh, you know, anywhere from from twenty four hours to to three, you know, to three days to um, is is probably from the syllabi that I've seen uh, would cover most of the time frame that you might expect an answer. So don't leave it to the last minute, but um, yeah, we, we will try to solve a problem. Now, if you don't get uh, an answer in that time frame, then, uh, you know, we're happy to, you're happy to, uh, you know, escalate it to the department chairs uh, in the first uh, instance. I mean, if you send it to uh, anyone higher up like the Dean, he'll just send it back to the department chair anyway. So it, it's um, it, it's probably best to, uh, you know, to deal with the instructor first. Usually most problems can be sorted, uh, but it, you know, in the rare circumstances, then uh, you know, we're happy to, to, to get involved and, and find a solution for everybody. Lovely. Thank you, Steve and Rob. Any additional thoughts on oh, yeah, email I would, etiquette? Um, I would say, um, firstly, how to through what medium to communicate by email. If you use web courses, if you are communicating with an instructor whose course you're in, use the messaging within web courses because your instructor will get that message in web courses, but also by email. And it will tell your instructor exactly which section of which course you're in. So there's no confusion there as to who's communicating with them. So try and communicate that way and be respectful. Treat it as if you were if writing a business email, right? You wouldn't start, hey, you know, I, I'm not keen on getting emails from professors that start, hey, prof, uh, you know, be respectful, write in a business-like fashion. And, you know, if you have a problem, 
state what that problem is, try and be um, unemotional about it if you can. And you should get a response. I know most of our instructors respond within 24 hours, except at weekends where it may take a little longer because not everyone's working all weekend. But if you don't get a response by day two, send them a quick email saying, you know, dear professor, I just wanted to check that you did receive my email because as Dr. File said, we all get so many emails, we get bombarded with emails and sometimes one does fall through the cracks. So a little reminder, and then I'm sure you'll get a timely response. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, Rob and Steve, you, you, and I've deliberately said Rob and Steve there because my next question is something that I am terrible at. And it's probably because I'm British and the convention in Britain is very, very different to the convention in the United States. If I'm a student, what do I call you guys? Do I call you Professor? Do I call you Dr. Bat? Do I call you Dr. Robin? Do I call you Rob? Do I call you, hey, Professor? Rob, Dr. Bat, what, 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 how should a student address you? And I'm going to go around everybody here. So nobody's going to escape. What, what do I call you? Um, I'd rather that students didn't use my first name unless I specifically asked them to use my first name, which I don't normally do. Um, because I think until they graduate, there should be a little, a little distance between students and professors. But Professor, Dr. Back, Professor Back, uh, whatever they want is fine by me, as long as it's not derogatory. Um, it's fine. When I sign my emails to students, I usually sign them Dr. Back. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mann, I'll call everybody doctor, but feel free to answer how you wish. Dr. Mann. How do students address you, sir? So my experience has been, uh, they have always addressed me as professor or Dr. Mann, uh, and never had any issue with, you know, uh, addressing me with any of these, uh, you know, uh, designations or names. So personally, I do prefer professor or Dr. Mann. As Robin mentioned, you know, there has to be some sort of, uh, you know, authoritative distance in the class in terms of teaching and learning. Outside the classroom, it's a totally, completely different uh, scenario. And that helps in maintaining the decorum of the classroom also. Okay, wonderful. Professor Deb. I only like to be called Professor Deb. I actually don't, sometimes my students, because we're very close, will call me Deb. And really that's not what I go by in my personal life. I go by Deborah. And sometimes they'll call me Deb and I'll say, please call me Professor Deb. If my dean walks by already, we have a very close connection. I'd like that level of respect to be demonstrated. Thank you. Lovely. And I'll pick on one more because I think we're probably going to say the same. Uh, Dr. Bufka. Yes. Yeah, so in my experience in, in regular classrooms uh, have always been that the students call me professor or Dr. Buffquin, although my last name is impossible to pronounce because it's very French and hard to uh, pronounce. But again, you know, I, I come back to my study abroad program. When we're in Europe, they call me Diego and I'm fine about it because imagine if... Uh, while traveling in Europe or whatever, they they they, they called me uh, Doctor Diego or Doctor Buffkin. I I it would be too formal for me. So they can call me Diego in Europe, with a little bit of uh, wine and uh, and and nice food, you know, around a table. That's what we do in Europe when we travel over there. They call me Diego, and and I appreciate when they call me by my first name. Lots of discussion about wine tonight. So I think we need to move on to a different question, but a more water based question. Um, office hours. Uh, how do we use office hours? Who would like to? I think Dependra, you hinted about office hours in in your your uh, an earlier answer. Um, yes. Doctor Baker, how, how do you use office hours with your students? 
Um, yeah, so I would say that there's kind of two main ways that I use office hours. One is if that student we were talking about earlier who has an issue, maybe they're having trouble getting to this. I do require research papers in all of my classes, so maybe they're having trouble getting started with the research paper. They need a brainstorm session or they just want me to check over what they have um, or they're just having an issue in the class. So that's probably the first way. But interestingly, the second way that I've um, found I've used office hours is when students want to advice about their future. So it's it's one thing I think, again, we have this amazing advising staff, career services, internship staff, of course, but I think that, you know, you, you end up really liking a professor and maybe they're in that particular industry or have been in that particular industry you want to go in. And so students will ask me questions all the time. How do I get into the theme park industry? Should I get a master's degree? Should I go for this internship or that internship? So it's just, it's always fun to use office hours in that kind of future focused way. Wonderful. Thank you. And who else would like to comment on office hours? Rosemary, thank I, you. I actually preset my office hours via Zoom so my students oh, can okay. come on anytime. So I literally go on at the time for the Zoom call, whether anyone comes in or not, and I make myself available for them. So that's one of the, the new uh, procedures that I used last semester, and it worked really, really well because it's preset for the entire semester and they just come on at the same time uh, twice a week uh, to meet with me. And it has been very effective. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. So office hours works, works folks. What about, we, we touched on this a little bit and uh, Dr. Bufka, please no more comments about Europe. Otherwise we're, all our students will be diving into <laughs> planes to fly to Europe. But what about out of class engagement? So things that you do outside of the classroom where students get engaged, because I know at the college there's zillions of things that we do, but can you give me maybe some specific examples of things that you do or associations or clubs that you're involved with that um, really do in, encourage and engage students beyond uh, the class. And actually, I'm thinking of FTPLA, Dr. Baker. So perhaps, uh, do you want to go first and explain, you know, how does it work? How do you get students uh, involved and uh, developed? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. So um, FTPLA is the Future Theme Park Leaders Association and is one of our many amazing registered student organizations at UCF. We literally have hundreds of them. Um, so there's almost certain to be an organization that would fit your, your interests. But FTPLA has been really great because on the one hand, it's kind of a gathering space for people who love theme parks. So there's kind of that, that similar interest, but then we're also very much a professional organization. So we do resume workshops, we have tons of guest speakers that come from industry and then every couple of weeks we do site visits so we actually go to all the local theme parks and attractions uh, different companies we even do a california trip and since you said not to mention it we also just started doing a europe trip so hey uh, that's the place to be these days but but students love it because they feel like they're learning and immersing in the industry but then also getting that kind of uh, instant network of other rosen college and other ucf students in general general um, that have a similar um, passion. I think I'd better bring things back to the United States again. So I'm going to dive to Dr. Pratt, who, uh, as an outer class of activity, is one of our cruise experts. Steve, can you talk a little bit? How does the cruise course work? And how was your, I think it was your first year of experience this year. Uh, what what yeah. a tough job for Dr. Pratt. Yeah, so many of, our, many of our courses we uh, take site visits and some of those are a little bit longer than others. So in spring break, uh, we went to on Royal Caribbean, Harmony of the Seas, uh, just us, uh, 70 students and three faculty and six and a half thousand of our closest uh, friends by the end of the cruise. And we went to uh, the US Virgin Islands, we went to St. Martin and we went to the Bahamas. And we, while we were aboard, uh, of course, we got to uh, taste and try out many of the activities and uh, other things that you do on board. But we also uh, were able to uh, uh, look behind the scenes, uh, go into the, the crew areas, see the operations of the cruise uh, ship. We got talks from all the department heads, uh, from food and beverage to the cabins to uh, entertainment. Uh, 
to the captain of the the captain of the ship came to uh, came to speak to us. So it was very um, insightful, and I think it encouraged uh, lots of our students to consider cruising as a, a potential uh, career. Uh, the cruise industry, not uh, not just Royal Caribbean, but other cruise lines participate in our careers fair and offer um, offer jobs to our students. So um, it was uh, yeah, Wonderful. great trip. Excellent. No, a, a very, very popular course. Any other examples of out of class activity with, where you're engaging the students that anybody wants to pick up on, which isn't located in Europe? <laughs> Rosemary, could you mention a few words about the career fair that we have to, in the fall and the spring? Do you want to say a few words about our amazing career fair? Did you say, who did you say, Dr. Fair? Uh, Rosemary. Would you oh, like to say okay. Yeah. Okay. I was also going to touch on our leadership our workshop. Oh, uh, fantastic. I inserted a lot yeah. of my <laughs> students into that because I taught leadership fundamental literally every semester. Uh, and we do have quite a lot of them. So with the mixed mode uh, scenario, we, we get to include that. So say, for example, this week we'll be in one of the leadership workshop and then next week we're face to face. So that's one of the ways in which the mixed mode scenario works really, really well. And of course, we have uh, two major career fairs every year where we have all the uh, industry partners coming in on campus. We had a record 109 uh, companies coming on last semester, and I'm sure we're expecting the same amount or more next semester. It's going to be in October this fall. And uh, we can't wait to welcome everyone and be a part of it where you get to meet all our industry partners, apply for jobs on the spot, get interviewed on the spot. So it's really a great experience, one I've never seen anywhere else in the world. This is just one of the very, very unique career fairs in the entire nation and the entire globe of hospitality colleges. So it's really a unique experience for all our students. So we look forward to that. Lovely. Alan, I would like, I would yeah, like to Andrew, add that uh, besides whatever has been mentioned so far, we do have several sessions of uh, faculty and dean meet and greet yeah. with the students yeah. outside the classroom. And these are wonderful opportunities for the students to come and connect with the faculty members and also with our dean and associate deans. and. If they have any questions, concerns, it's it's a nice thing. You know, we have a very casual setup. There's some food. There are some uh, you know uh, non-alcoholic beverages. They can they can they can enjoy these, and also at the same time they can talk and connect with the faculty outside the classroom. So we try each and everything that is possible on our end to make the students comfortable so that you know they have the best learning experience on Rosen College campus. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. And I'm just conscious of time. We've got about seven or eight minutes before we close. So I'll guess if there's any questions that you want to put into the Q&A uh, box, please fire them over the next few minutes and we, we'll try and get them all uh, answered. Um, I, I've got two questions, which so hopefully we'll get some more from the crowd. If not, uh, not a problem. One challenging one. Uh, I'm a student. I'm really, really struggling. I think I've got some well-being issues. Where, where where do you send people if, if someone's coming to you with some sort of sort of health or mental health challenges? What do we, what do we do to look after our students? Who, who who would like to offer me some advice as a a student who's struggling? Well, we have a counselor uh, right on campus at the Rosen College who comes uh, a few times uh, per week. So that's one resource that is located right on campus. Uh, at UCF main campus, we also have um, counseling and psychological services as well for our students um, and staff members, because sometimes, you know, staff and faculty members also need to see a, a counselor, right? <laughs> We're all humans. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I think. Okay. Now, I think the really important thing, uh, Diego, what you mentioned, that there's facilities and people on campus. 
So the fact that we're a distance from the main campus is not a problem. We've got excellent people. We have Rich, who is our CAPS advisor, who, who really does a marvellous job. So yeah, no worries. Everything's on campus, folks. And I should say we also have physical health needs because we, we yeah. have the UCF clinic on main campus, but then we also have the, the Rosen College clinic. So there's also um, help with that. Wonderful. And if Thank I can you. also just um, use here CAPS, which is um, Crisis and um, Counseling and Psychological Services, also has a 24 hour crisis hotline. So if any student needs help urgently 24 hours a day, there's a phone number. Wonderful. I we try to uh, include this information in the uh, outline as well. So all the students, when we go through the outline on the first day of class, everything is listed there, directing them to this information. If I have a student who is having some challenges, I do resend that and insert the attachment in terms of where they need to go and remind them that all of these services are available to them uh, 24 hours. So that's one of the things that I also include. I also have one thing to add, and that is to make myself available and to create such safety with my students that they come to me to let me know if something's going wrong. I think that that first step on the pathway to getting students help is very, very important as well. Wonderful. No, thank you, everybody. Okay, we are five minutes to go. So this is the last question and I'm gonna start with Rosemary and then in this order of the boxes, it's Rosemary, Carissa, Deb, Diego, Steve, Robin and Dependra. And the question is, what makes the Rosen College such an amazing place to study? Rosemary. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's really unbelievable. Uh... I, I say it every day, I feel it every day. We have some of the most uh, wonderful faculty staff. Uh, our students are amazing. So they really create that experience. There's always a lot of energy. There's always activities. There are nev there's never a boring day at Rosen campus. I'm, I'm still intrigued by it and always overwhelmed and surprised how we're able to pull it off. There's nowhere else like Rosen College. And uh, it's just really an amazing place for people to develop with their leadership skills. There's always activities going on, always things to be involved in to really develop our students, make them aware there's a lot of involvement in terms of awareness and constant reminders and activities, whether it's from student services uh, to all the career fairs, to all the partners who come on campus. We have a lot of uh, interaction with our see uh, Central Florida Hospitality Lodging Association. They're always on campus coming in to bring all their expertise, advice and management teams and leaders to come on campus. And there's always sharing. So our students do get to experience that. One of the things that I really, really look forward to is that our students actually plan many of these major events where they're getting hands-on experience to showcase our college. So. It's, it's just one of a kind and different and unique. Plus we have a well-mixed faculty and staff from all over the world. And that makes every day even more interesting with the cultural experiences and backgrounds from each and every one, whether it's from students, faculty or staff. So that's, that's really truly what makes it different and unique. Wow, follow that Dr. Baker. I was going to say part of the problem is this is not a five minute kind of question. Yeah. So uh, let me just say Rosen College is amazing. I agree with everything that was said. Amazing environment. Um, the physical location is is phenomenal. You're literally living in the lab of the hospitality industry when you go to Rosen College. Um, I think the industry partnerships we have give this a, a, a real world kind of focus. You know, you're going to get a job when you leave us. You're going to have learned something. Um, of course, I love all my colleagues, including everyone on the screen here. But if I had to pick the number one thing, and even though I did work for Disney, I'm not trying to be cheesy. It's the students. 100% the students, the passion, the excitement that they have every day when I walk into the classroom makes me want to come back the next day. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Baker. Professor Deb. 
Hospitality means a love of strangers. And when you walk down the halls at Rosen College into the classrooms with our multicultural atmosphere and ultimate hospitality and ultimate love of strangers, there's nothing better. And lastly, I don't know how we're so lucky, but we teach the best students in the world. Thank you. Wonderful. Dr. Bufka. I would say our state-of-the-art campus that looks like a resort, like a five-star resort. Uh, I, I always love coming, working at, at on this campus. Uh, all of our multicultural and multi and, and and you know our faculty have a variety of professional backgrounds as well in theme parks, hotels. I mean, you name it. Um, and so, and they come from over seventeen different countries. I mean, just in this panel here, we have you know faculty from India. I'm French and Brazilian, uh, Australia, England. I mean, you name it. So South Africa. So oh, don't miss South Africa. Dr. Bat gets very upset if you met, don't miss South Africa. <laughs> and the Caribbean. And the yeah. Caribbean, exactly. So uh, this multicultural aspect is absolutely fantastic. Lovely. Thank you, Dega. Dr. Pratt, what makes Rosen College so special? Yeah, I think it's already been said. I, I just love the, the, the mix um, of uh, different faculty with uh, different experiences that they can share with the students. People complement each other. Um, I think there's a good atmosphere amongst uh, with each other that we really have a, a spirit of hospitality that we share with our students as well. So yeah, I think that's, um, for me, that's, I'm relatively new. I joined last August. Uh, so yeah, for me, that, that really stood out. Wonderful. You've almost survived that first year, Steve. Wonderful. Dr. Pratt, uh, Dr. Bat, sorry. Um, I think, well, everyone said so much of what makes us unique, but, you know, it's situational learning. I don't think there's any other college, hospitality college in the world that looks like Rosen College. You know, you're in what feels like a resort in the heart of Orlando's tourism corridor in the most visited destination in the nation and arguably in the world. So where better than to learn about the hospitality industry from a multicultural faculty from, I think it's about 18 countries that we originate from now and with tons of industry experience. Most of our faculty have worked in industry. They are teaching from their own experience. They're gonna tell you stories about their own experiences. It's not faculty of simply read a textbook and are now teaching you the textbook. And I think that makes a huge difference. Our students are in big demand. At our last career fair, we had 109 employers, was the maximum that the fire marshal would allow. There were 25 employers who couldn't get into the career fair who were on a waiting list. And that's because people know that Rosen College produces excellent students, excellent workers, excellent managers, and they're in demand. So you're gonna get a good job at the end of it. And I think lastly, who would not, given the opportunity, want to study at the number one rated hospitality college and program in the nation? It's kind of no brainer, isn't it? Wow. Dr. Mann, beat that. So uh, I guess everybody has covered everything what was said before but one thing i will i will definitely share at this point is rosen college is number one for the reason because we have the futuristic vision and outlook that was provided by the previous leadership and the current leadership at the college and students are wonderfully surprised when they take these courses that they're being introduced to concepts that are not yet being practically put in practice on ground but are in talks. So that gives them the excellent exposure to get familiar with these concepts, new technologies that are coming in. And when they have these opportunities of going back to internships, they shine, they shine, they stand out, and they're already on the radar of all of these employers for the management training program. So I, I, think, I think that's where we as a college stand out amongst other colleges because we have built these excellent industry partnerships, and also we provide students with all the resources for their success. Wonderful. Okay, everybody, excellent job. 
our colleagues from Jamaica, Brazil, Australia, South Africa, India, oh, and California. Can't, mustn't forget California, Dr. Baker. Professor Deb, I don't know where you're from. Where are you from originally? My background, well, my family background is half Russian, half part English, German, and Irish. I consider myself a global citizen. Wow. What, what, or, or just confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's really nice insight. The purpose was this to just introduce a little bit of the life of the Rosen College, what we do, how we do it and why. Uh, I think you've answered it perfectly. I think we all now need a trip to Europe or a cruise with Dr. Pratt and that would just round it off perfectly. Um, but for our guests, I hope you found that very, very useful indeed. And I'm sure we will repeat this again as we go through the academic year. But a nice introduction, everybody. Thank you very much indeed. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you.